Hello guys, this is Brian from the SAP MM Consultant Channel. I'm here to help you with some MM topics, processes and settings, so even if you don't have much experience, you can successfully implement them. Our topic for today is batch search strategy. We will check what settings are required in the system and with some examples we will see how LIFO, last in first out, FIFO, first in first out and FEFO, first expire, first out strategies work. These processes are commonly used in industries like food and pharma. So let's start. We will need that the batches for the material are classified. So in the material master, we will need to use a class type 23, that is for batches, with some characteristics that we are defining for our processes. In this case, we are using expiration day shed life, the date of last good receipt, and the day when the batch was produced. Then we will need to define selection classes. In this selection class, we will have the characteristics that are necessary to make our selection. In our case, our selection class is Chef Life 1, where we are selecting based on these three characteristics. All of them are standard. The standard characteristic for batches started with LOPM. So we have expiration date chef life, the remaining chef life, this is how many days are still for the material to be expired, and the delivery date. Once we have the selection class defined, we will also need a sort rule or sort sequence. So once the, the batches are selected, we need to define based on which criteria we want to sort them out. So in this case, we have date of last good receipt, receipt date, and for first in, first out, we, are, we, should, have, we should use the ascending order, and for last in, first out, we have to change to descending order. So if we take a look to the customizing now, logistic general, batch management, batch determination and batch check, we see that this functionality work with the standard SAP condition techniques. So we will have to define tables and access sequences. In our case, we were using standard as access sequence. So in the case for inventory management, we are using set B, she one, that is linked to the access sequence ME01. Here, our condition record will be maintained by plant material level. In this strategy type, we could define here and link the selection class and the sort sequence. But it will be more flexible if we just leave this open here and we maintain the selection class and the sort sequence in the condition record. When we define our strategy type, we have to build our search procedure. In this case, we're using the standard procedure where we introduce our class type condition type. And finally, we have to allocate our procedure in the case of inventory management to a movement type. In our case, we will be using our procedure with the consumption from cost center 201 movement type. Okay, now that we have all the requirements set in place, we will see what information do we have. For material 72, we have three batches. Those were classified when the good receipt took place. 
So here we have date of last good receipt. So this is the first batch that was received, then this one, and finally this one. Okay. So the first receipt was B3, and the last receipt was B1. Here we have the chef light expiration dates and the date of manufacturing. Now we check the condition record for the determination. Okay, so set BC1 at plant material. We have to link the selection criteria first and this Chef Life 1 class, where we are defining that we want to select materials that have a remaining chef life greater than 10 days. So at least you need more than 10 days to expire the batch, so this could be selected. And then we have our source sequence. In this case, receive date, ascending. Okay, so first in, first out. Now, let's go to make the consumption of the batch. So for our material 72, quantity 30 in our plant. Here we have the batch determination. Here we have a lot of information. First, we can see how the condition record was determined. In this case, set BC1 was determined by plant material. Then if we click on each batches, we will see the information about the classification of the batches. We also can see a log with all the steps performed by the system. And here's one important thing, okay? Here we have also our sorting. So we said that this is first in, first out. And our first material that was entered into the stock was the batch number three. If you remember, batch number three had a good receipt of the 1st of May. Okay, and then batch number two, 25 of May. Okay, but here we don't have batch number three. Why? This is because the batch number three that correspond to the selection criteria. And this is, this is because we define a selection criteria with more than 10 days for the expiration. So if we see, for example, batch number two, more than 10 days from today, 6 of June, it will be a chef light expiration date greater than the 16th of June. And batch number three have an expiration date of 8th of June. So this is less than the 10 days from, from today. So this is automatically excluded. So for the other two batches, batch one and two, the first in is batch number two and then batch number one. So, so this is what we can see here. We also have an overview of the strategy here with the, all the information that we have defined and with the sorting rule in ascending order. So this is how FIFO works. Now, if we want to make the same example with LIFO, last in, first out, we have to change the sort rule. So in our sort rule, that it's ascending, now it will be descending order. So if now we do again the same example in our plant for 30 units, 72 material, now we see that batch number one is selected first. 
Okay. So the good receipt day 31st of May is selected first. Okay, so this is last in, first out. Now, if we want to work with FEFO, for expired, third out, we have an example in sales. So in the same steps, but instead of inventory management, we're using sales, we define our strategy type, set BG1, link to the asset sequence SD01 by customer material. This is also standard access sequence and tables. Then we have the batch search procedure for sales. We are using also the standard one and we include our condition. And finally, we have to allocate the procedure, in this case, to the sales area and document type. Okay. Then we create the condition record for SD. So inventory management here condition record for SD set BG1 for customer material. We have our customer and our material 72. The selection criteria we have the same class, Chef Life 1, with the remaining Chef Life more than 10 days. And we have our sort sequence. In this case, we have a different characteristic. Instead of using good receipt date, we are using expiration date, Chef Life, in ascending order. So when we have that, we can check doing an outbound delivery based on a sales order, the batch determination being done. So when we see the batch split, this is already done. So in the same way as in the other example, batch number three is automatically excluded, okay? Because we don't have more than 10 days. And here we have the difference. In the other one, we have the sorting based on the good receipt date. And here we have the sorting based on the expiration date or chef life okay batch number two on the 7 of june and the other one on the 16 of june that is the information that we can see here okay 16 and 7. we also if we do a batch determination we can see all the information in the same case as we saw in inventory management our conditions Okay, in this case, set BG1 is determined by customer material. And we have strategy info with the sort sequence, the log, and the strategy analysis as we have in the other one. So this is how FIFO, LIFO, and FEFO works in SAP in conjunction with the batch search strategy. If you enjoyed this demo, please click on like here and subscribe to my channel as I'm continuously uploading more videos. See you. Have a good day.